Hello, this is Adrald and welcome to episode 3 of Thermal Expansion from Scratch. In this episode we're going to take a look at fluids. Uh, what kind of fluids the mod adds, how to transfer them, how to store them, etc. So let's get started. Let's begin by taking a look at the liquids added by the mod. First of all we've got the stabilized redstone which is produced by putting redstone in a magma crucible and the, the liquid can be used to make some of the blocks and items in the mod. It can also be placed down and when you do that it looks like this. And it spreads quite fast and it has a special property which is it will act as a redstone signal so when you connect it to redstone it will actually turn it on. Just like that. The next liquid is energized glowstone which is produced by putting magma and glowstone in a magma crucible and again you can use the liquid to make some of the items of the mod and when you place the liquid down you notice that the bucket is placed um, it's, uh, it's upside down uh, when you place it down it's actually going to go up instead of down and here I've put already one of them which is gone up to the sky and normally when it reaches level 128 it should uh, turn to a glowstone block. It should freeze and freeze and turn to a glowstone block. I haven't been able to do it with this one. I'm not sure why, but uh, that's the official information on the wiki. And that's energized glowstone. The next liquid is resonant ender, which is made by putting ender pearls in a magma crucible. And again, you can use the liquid to make some of the recipes of the mod. And when you place it down, it doesn't spread very far or very fast and it has a special property which is when you um, go into it it will actually teleport you to a random location and if you throw an item in it will also teleport you to a random location just like that and same with mods and um, mobs and other entities so that's ender a uh, resonant ender next we've got blazing pyrothium let's see what this is all about. This is actually um, super lava basically and whatever you put next to it it will set on fire after a little bit just like that and it will also smelt things like cobblestone or even cobblestone stairs it will smelt them automatically make them into stone or stone brick stairs like right here so that's blazing pyrothium and it's made by put in pyrethium dust in a magma crucible and um, there's a recipe for pyrethium dust which is this one and you can use the liquid again to make some of the recipes for the mod. Um, next liquid is the opposite of the pyrethium dust, pyrethium uh, bucket I mean and it's cryothium, gelid cryothium. When you place it down it looks like that, spreads not very fast and when you place some blocks next to it it will actually put snow on them. So that's what the liquid does. And to make this liquid you're going to need to find some mobs in a snow biome which are called blizz and they're gonna drop these blizz rods which you can pulverize to get blizz powder and then you can make erythium dust out of that and finally you can put that in a magma crucible and it'll generate the gelid cryothium. Next liquid is the liquefacted coal, which is made by putting pulverized coal in a magma crucible. And I don't think it has any special properties, but you can still place it in the world and you can of course use it in the compression dynamo to generate power, just like I covered last episode. So those are the liquids added by the mod. We've seen the new fluids, but how about ways to store them? Well, for that we've got portable tanks right here and these are basically blocks that are able to contain fluids inside of them and there are four tiers. Each tier is, uh, has double the capacity of the tier before it and we begin with a portable tank which has capacity for eight buckets and then 16 buckets with the hardened tank, 32 buckets reinforced portable tank as, and finally the resonant portable tank has a capacity of 64 buckets 
and there is a creative version that's meant for admins and you can only obtain it from the creative menu. Now there are several ways in which you can fill these tanks with fluids. Uh, the first of all is using a fluid transposer. Let's say you got some uh, liquid in here, like jellied pyrothium. Uh, we can just put one of the tanks in here, set it to fill, and it will fill the tank with that liquid. And now when you hold shift, it's going to tell you what fluid it's got inside as well as its current level of fluid. And when you place it down, you can see that it stays in there. Uh, the other way is to grab yourself a container that has a liquid inside, like a water shell for example, and just right click on the tank. Just like that. And the final way is by using Fluidax, which I will be taking a look at shortly. Um, so, special characteristics about this block. It's, it gets its input from the top, if you use Fluidax, and it outputs from the bottom. But it can also get liquids from the bottom, and right now it's in blue, which means it's taking liquids from the bottom, but if you use a crescent hammer, on it, it's going to change to red. That means that now it will output liquids to the bottom. Um, so, another characteristic of these tanks is that you can stack them on top of each other. If I get a portable tank here that's empty and put it there, uh, immediately the bottom side of the top one changes to output and this is now acting like one tank. And if I even try to change the top one to be input from the bottom, that's not going to work. Um, and you can combine different kinds of tanks. So if you have a tank here, a tank there, um, they will all work like one tank. And if I put liquid in the top tank, then it will go down to the bottom one. And since the top one is creative, then the, others, the other ones will fill up. So now let's take a look at Fluidax. Let's now take a look at fluid decks, which are items used to transfer liquids around. So, there are two varieties. There's the normal one, that lets you see inside, and the opaque one, that will not let you see the liquids going through it. And the opaque one is actually cheaper to make. Now, let's see how to use them. I'm going to connect these two tanks together by putting normal fluid decks between them, and they're all going to connect just nicely. And if I set this tank to output and give it some water, then the um, water is going to go down into the liquid act and is going to be moved to the first valid container that it finds in this case is this tank that has input set to the bottom. So let's do just that. As you can see, the liquid went instantly from the tank to the ducts and then it went into the tank. And now if we check the amount of this tank, we can see that it has thousand um, units, which is exactly what I gave it. And, you know, I can keep doing that as much as I want. Um, this pipe has a few modes that can be rotated with a crescent hammer, so if I click once, it's going to change into this mode, which basically is useful to um, when you have a container that does not output automatically, like this tank here. For example, I've got a tank from open blocks that will not output liquid automatically. So as you can see, the liquid is not transferring. But if I turn on the redstone signal, then the pipe will actively try to extract liquid from containers attached to it. So if I turn on the redstone signal now, the liquid gets sucked by the pipe. And you can see the redstone signal is on because the um, sign here is brighter. And the water has been transferred to the other tank. And there's a last mode, which is unconnected. And basically, in this mode, the pipe, the liquid act, I'm um, sorry, the fluid act will not connect to anything. And let's see the opaque one. It works the same way, except you cannot see the liquid going through the pipe, through the duct. So just like that. And there's one more thing you can do with the uh, fluid acts. You can use a pneumatic servo, which is another item from the mod and you can right click it on a fluid deck that's currently connected to something. If you try to do it on a liquid that does not connect to anything and then use it, it's not going to work. But you can still install it. You just have to right click on the fluid deck with a nomadic servo and then oh, it says it's already installed, good. And then with your empty hand you right click on the fluid act. And you've got this fluid filter that has two modes, whitelist 
and blacklist. And if it's on blacklist and you put a liquid in like that, and then you try to transfer the liquid from one tank to another, that's going that's going to go through the liquid act. Um, let's see. Let's put some water in here. As you can see, the fluid act is not accepting the water because I've got the water on a blacklist. If I were to put it on a whitelist, then it will work. So you can use this filter to, you know, uh, route your fluids in whichever way you want. So those are fluid acts. And here's a nifty trick you can use on your portable tanks and fluid acts. You can shift right click them with a crescent hammer in order to remove them. But in this case it's empty. Not only that, if the tank has some liquid inside it will keep the liquid inside in your inventory as well as when you place it back in the world. And you can do this thing again with fluid acts as well as other items and blocks in the mod. The last thing I want to take a look at is Florbs, F-L-O-R-B, and uh, these items are used to contain liquids. It can contain not only liquids from the thermal expansion mod, but also from other mods, like for example industrial craft, um, build craft, etc. And how you do it is, first you want to craft yourself one of these empty Florbs, or if you want to contain lava or blazing pyrothium, you want to craft yourself a magmatic floor and then you can fill them up in a fluid transposer. So let's put some uh, cryotheme in here and then let's put the empty floor on the top and set it to fill. And now this is going to be filled up with that liquid. And how you use them is basically you hold the floor you want to use and you right click it. And what that's going to do is throw the liquid. Just like that. Works with all of the liquids that can be placed in the world, of course. So a pretty fun item that uh, could be potentially used in Balloon Wars or, I don't know, whatever game you can invent. And that's the floor. And that's the end of this episode. In the next one, I'm going to cover items, storing them and transferring them, and a few other things. So I hope to see you there, hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time.